Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm super stoked. There's two very good reasons why I'm super stoked and they're right here. We've got the GoPro Hero 10 and we've got the Nata Ultimate Chin Mount. And I believe we might have the best MTB POV setup right here. I'll get into that shortly, but first off, if you guys want to see a comparison for the GoPro Hero 10 against the GoPro Hero 9, the Insta360 and the Osmo Action, I highly recommend going on a DC Rainmaker's channel. He does really good side-by-side -side comparisons and breaks everything down. He also gives really good tips and hints for everybody who wants to learn the best hacks to get the best footage out of your GoPro. And for me, I'm gonna go further with the testing, not in a technical aspect, but in a real life aspect, because the GoPros have got, are really good, they're really good cameras, but they do have limitations or have had in the past for low light, now, if you're on a, a super chill trail where there's not much movement, they'll perform pretty okay for what they are. Not great, but pretty okay. But when there's lots of movement and uh, diving and aggressive riding at speed, that's when the stabilization will always have a problem and you'll get lots of noise because the ISO then wants to get bumped up, which is basically creating artificial light to try to make your footage look better, but the stabilization then fails. I've heard better things with the GoPro Hero 10. Certainly there's some anti-noise in their um, digital software, which is meant to improve the whole experience. So I'm super stoked about that. But I actually want to get the whole setup shown to you straight away, and then we're going to get on the trails and we're going to ride various different things and let you guys decide what you think works. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so. Package, of course, you get your GoPro. I want to get straight down to it because, you know, I want to get up and go riding. And um, here is an Artec Ultimate Chin Mount, but I will show you here in the packaging. So, pull this guy out here. That's the Ultimate Chin Mount. And this is going to be the thing that um, we attach the GoPro to. And then you get some cable ties. So, I'm going to quickly show you. Here's one that I did earlier. Don't know why I did that. That makes no sense. Um, so, yeah, here's the, the Ultimate chin mount that goes on there this is going to be my go-to helmet and um, the reason being is because it's got a removable chin bar and that means so I can do the whole vloggy thing take the chin bar off and just turn the chin bar around as I'm filming myself and but also keeps me cool as opposed to wearing a big full downhill helmet. I will wear that of course when I'm doing full downhill days but this is downhill certified and this is going to be sort of my go-to trail slash enduro helmet and that's pretty much it and I've pretty much flipped the angle there and that's that's how much it how it's going to be and this is going to find lots of cool footage where you see all the movement on the bike as opposed to on the top of the head but I wanted to quickly install the ultimate chin mount on this downhill helmet. So what we've got what I've done here there's, there's two ways you can do this for the ultimate chin mount you can sort of install the chin mount there and you can have the cables going over like so which aren't very pretty um, it's fully functional and it doesn't you know it works completely well but i wanted to have it sort of really super neat so all i've done is just drill two super small holes which you can see there with the light going through two super small holes in there so because to be honest this is going to be, once it's fixed, that's it, it's fixed for life. I have no intentions of removing it. So all you have to do is get the cable tie like that. It, it does pain me. I mean, I've, I've for years been trying to get the, the right camera angle. Um, and there's, you know, chest mounts. Well, yeah, chest makes you look fast, but you still see a lack of movement um, and, you, and you get a lack of gradient on the top of the helmet. You, everything looks really slow and you don't see anything. You're barely lucky if you can see the front of a wheel, which is really boring and not very engaging. Whereas the chin mount is, and you know, you've got lots of top vloggers and riders who've been cotton onto that for ages. So as you can see, just quick, dum -dum -dum, cross them over like that. Straight through to there. Hold the Let's pull that through. I mean, look, that's, 
this is how long it takes to actually install it. I mean, to drill the holes took me probably about 20, 30 seconds. I just got a little Dremel that you can just use an actual normal drill. Super small, just literally no wider than what your cable ties are, or just a tiny bit wider. So just slightly tacking them into place, like that. And the, the key is just keep these knobbly bits, the end bits, just out of the helmet. Slightly pushing them through. So I'm, I'm, I want that down as well, so it's a bit lower. Tighten it into place. Super solid. It's done, it's installed. So now I'm just gonna get my little snips and just simply go right to the end there. Like that, like that. And we're good to go. Okay, let's get on the trail in three, two, one. So we're at the top of the trail, first test run. There's gonna be some interchanging lighting conditions because it's, as you can see, it's sunny here at the top, but we're gonna dive into the woodland and then there's gonna be different breaks of sun and then more darker areas. So it'll be really good to test the dynamic range of the GoPro. Yeah. I've got the GoPro set to max ISO 800. Um, I don't want any more than that. I know it has got some anti-noise and software built into the new uh, 10, but I still don't want to risk it because I hate looking back at footage when it's, it's low light and it's just really grainy. So let's see how this performs. Let's do it. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Really rough. That jump just p throws you up into the air, it's really fun. This is a horrible little jump, it looked really, just really brutal. But the key is to jump to that to the right, so it's not as hard. And now we're gonna go into changing light conditions. You can see the sun popping through there. Letting a bit distance between Meg and I because I couldn't see the trail. And here we are, back into the light. So now it's looking for you guys, but I hope this footage is looking sick. Yeah. And that's the trail. So, even now those are good tests because, yeah, it's so be interested to see. I will edit. I will put an example of raw alongside my edited footage. And here we are, back into the light. So now it's looking for you guys, but I hope this footage is looking sick. So we can see the difference. I do always film in flat. So on to the next test. So I thought I'd just go check the footage to see how we've done. And I just wanted to show straight away it's glitching. Would you just hold that, Max, please? Yeah. And I'm going to try to resolve the glitch. So as the guys can see, so you can see it's in three, three minutes. 16 there so i'll turn it off it's all been updated by the way and this has always been a problem with gopros it's weird that any company for years can have glitchy products 
but yet still do so well. So I'm just doing the whole seven second hold, see if that's the same for this model as it was for the, it was. So that's just literally, we've just stopped the trail there, wanted to go see how it looks and uh, hopefully now it'll play. Okay, it will, so but GoPro still guys, come on. Right, we'll continue. So the plan now is to do some corners, but we wanted to, Jesus Christ, you okay? So, the plan now is to do some corners. Yeah, we like crashing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been wanting to session corners all week. Meg's okay, by the way, obviously. Good. Um So, yeah, we're going to whack it into slow-mo. 4K 120, see how it performs. I mean, it's such a big upgrade that I'm really excited. Plus, we've got real tricky lighting conditions, low light conditions for sure. The sun keeps popping back out, so let's see how it performs. Let's do it. Perfect testing conditions, but not a perfectly performing GoPro. We've had this turned off. I just chilling out with Meg. We thought we'd go check the footage out. Swipe, swipe our, uh, up once we turned it on, and here we go. It's crashed again. Bearing in mind, I've only tried to do playback three times. One time it's worked. Two times it's crashed. So we're not having much luck at the moment, guys. Right, we're dropping into the second trail. Low light. It's continuing. I was hoping for a little bit more sun, just purely for the enjoyment of the ride. Now we're going to go into a real dark section. It's really gnarly, this next bit. Not this bit, but what we're about to drop into. I need full concentration. Ooh. And this gets pretty tech. Good Lord. <laughs> Brutal, I didn't realise there was a tree stump there. I must have just missed that out of luck last time. I'm hoping the camera's performing pretty well. Nice drifting. So loose. Oh man, legs, that was so fun. Oh, that was so fun. Sweet. I'm hoping that performed well on the GoPro. <sighs> but these really, are, for me, there's tougher conditions. To expect anything more than what we've gone through that I think would be very unrealistic. But if any of this footage is coming out reasonable after I've tinkered with it a little bit, I'd, excuse me, I'd personally be pretty damn happy. Oh, let's do it again, eh? Yeah, that was so much fun. Right, we are back at another location to test out the Hero 10. It's going to be more consistent low light. If we're lucky, there might be a little bit of light shining through. We're just going to make our way to the trail. It's a really short trail, it's lots of fun. And I'm hoping we can get some cool slow-mo again to really test it and see what it's like in low light. We'll, right, we'll see you at the start of the trail. So we're going to drop into a new trail and this is going to be the ultimate test for low light. As you can see, it's dark in there for sure. If this footage turns out to be pretty good, it's an absolute thumbs up for me, no questions, because those conditions there for me are pushing the boundaries a bit too much to what we should expect from this GoPro. I am also filming in GoPro Colour. I thought it'd be nice to mix it up. The previous footage that you've seen was in flat and I've actually edited it and put some colours in that I wanted how it to look. But on this one, I'm going to leave it to GoPro to decide. 
and see how it comes out out of the box and I won't touch it at all and if I do touch it I'll also inform you guys and show you the difference so let's go do this test it's a short trail super fun super like lots of little bits for us to think about and let's see if this stabilization works right look how dark this is low light ultimate test some may argue a little bit unfair on the actual GoPro but let's see hold on a second guys I'm here in the studio and I've just reviewed the footage I think showing you guys the first part of the trail in GoPro color which is raw and completely untouched by myself the second part of the trail allow me to just make a couple of minor adjustments all of which you guys could do at home so you can see the benefits and how the footage could be enhanced to make it look even better okay let's check this out oh these conditions are greasy oh. really loose it's greasy because of the rains that we've had here in the oh god a stump i'm just i'm just literally sliding oh i completely messed that up do you know what i'm going to carry on <laughs> and slide and it was so much fun this corner is brutal just kind of let off and then trust it oh That was fun. What we want to be looking at here guys is the actual effectiveness of the stabilization added with the quality of the video itself. The conditions we're testing here are truly unfair and many people aren't going to be riding in such low light conditions but for those guys and girls who are going to be riding in deep forest and of course whether it is interchanging one minute it's sunny and one minute it's not and you still want to go out and ride and get some quality footage this is the purpose of what I'm doing here for this test but as you can see the quality of the footage is pretty damn good and the stabilization is still working so it's a massive improvement in my opinion from the GoPro Hero 9. As you can see it's low light conditions we are going to do a slow-mo on 4k 120 on the puddle see how it's going to look Meg's going to be the guinea pig and sending it. <laughs> right, let me get this set up. Oh. <laughs> well, we definitely, um, we definitely got the shot. You can see the helmet right now. We are covered, as is the GoPro. But <laughs> let's see, let's see how that turns out. <laughs> low light test 4k 120 Woo! yo yo okay it's a foot it's dead. Oh, I bottled it. You. Woo. Oh, that was coming in hot there. I drifted. Whoa, that is so hot. <laughs> Oh, sick. We're filming, we're filming. Awesome, guys. Welcome back to the studio. What a great time I've had testing this GoPro Hero 10. I'm going to blast through some of the points because I know this is a long video. But first things first, GoPros are awesome in sunny conditions. We know that, that's why GoPro always advertise their products using footage from beautiful days, probably the best days ever on planet Earth. So we can give a GoPro a massive tick for that and they've been great at that since ever GoPro came along. Real life conditions, low light, interchanging conditions and such, very different story. First things first, if we go to the extreme testing that I did, it was very unfair of me what I did and I didn't expect the GoPro to perform at all. To see the footage that we, of, of course, you've now seen, 
it blew my mind actually. Now of course it's not beautiful, great footage that you're going to send off to see if you can bag a GoPro award, but it was certainly damn good considering the testing conditions that we, we, we tried it in. I, um, I could barely see, I was really struggling to see as I was riding, see you wouldn't ride in those conditions, but the fact that the GoPro performed somewhat was amazing. When you saw the side by side, I slightly increased the exposure, I slightly dropped the mid tones, I increased the colour uh, to warm, um, which brought it out a little bit more. I think I did a few more adjustments, but very minor. I will do a separate video on that if you guys are interested, just drop me a comment. Um, but as you could see, it just slightly brought the footage out that little bit more. And of course, that was filmed in GoPro Colour. GoPro Colour was good, really liked it. I think for me, if I was just doing just regular vlogs and such, I'd probably film in GoPro Colour and slightly increase the saturation because previous models of the GoPro, I always found to be more oversaturated, whereas I actually found the GoPro Hero 10 to be less saturated, which is just a, an interesting point. Also, the GoPro Flat had more colour than I'd expect. Had a, you'd always wanted to try to be as flat as possible and you could really get your your own mark on the colour grading aspect, but still fine, nothing to be concerned about. Both really, really good, just slight little changes I thought would make you guys aware. The 4K 120, brilliant, really, really good. Very unfair test on the low light, because as you guys can imagine, you know, frames per second, that's like 30, if I'm doing 30 frames per second, that's like 30 photos in a second, 120, so that'd be 120, so you can imagine the shutter's going like this, there's much less light coming in, which therefore means it's much of a harder test to have less light coming in in low light conditions. is just ultimately unfair, which I have been, sorry Mr. GoPro, but I just have, and it performed pretty damn good. You know, when I freeze the, the frame there, you could see the sharpness, and I thought that was pretty damn good. Yes, it's not gonna be like a movie camera. I mean, the camera I'm using there is, is like a 5,000 pound, or was like a $7,000 $7, camera. Of course, it's not gonna be that quality, but you wouldn't expect it to be, because it's, an action cam, like a fraction of the price, but really, really nice to have the upgrade. You've obviously seen the 4K 120 in more normal conditions. Um, yesterday when filming with Stacey and G, and it just, it's just beautiful, it just looks awesome for an action cam, so really, really tough, double thumbs up there. Um, of course, the Nartec Ultimate Chin Mount um, performs awesome. In my opinion, and in many others, you just can't get better. You see so much of the riding, you see so much of the action, you feel engaged, you feel like you're riding the bike even though you're just reviewing the footage. It's exciting, it's entertaining. You've all seen it before, you see some of the best riders in the world and they've just got a camera plonked on the top there and it just looks dull. And this also gives you the best chance of seeing the, the gradient of the footage. You're always going to get that thing called the GoPro effect, so when you're looking at steep or crazy features and such, and it won't look that steep. That's unfortunately these cameras, it's not just linked to GoPros, that's just red when you're watching Red Bull TV and everything. I walk some of those tracks and you're like, they are crazy, and unfortunately cameras just don't pick it up, but you have the best chance of picking up the NAR uh, as you're seeing the rider and getting the most engaging footage using this chin mount. And one thing I didn't actually show, to be fair, so I'm so focused on the GoPro is that flexible rubber base, which is so cool. So that means, so as you're strapping it on with the cable ties, it, it'll lock into place, depending obviously the size of your uh, chin bar, it'll custom fit, locks into place. Super awesome, super stealthy, great product. So um, I think the 4K60 as well was really cool. I, I think that would be one of my go-tos to be honest, because if you think you're going to do something really cool that you want to slow down or you're following somebody that you know that you're going to capture a bit of magic, film in with the 4K 60, obviously getting a great, great quality because it's 4K, but then with it being 60 frames, means that you can pop it on the slow-mo and just get a really cool shot and then get it back to the normal footage. And again, if there's something really cool, you can slow that down again and then go back to normal footage. So I think that would be really cool for some vlogs, MTB edits or anything else like that. So 4K 60 will definitely be one of my go-to. And then you've got out probably between that, the 4K 30 frames. And then for me getting off the bike, I was just, yes, all I was doing for filming was moving around, just holding the, the camera like that, capturing the guys riding. Because again, I wanted it in real life. I didn't want to get poles and booms and drones and everything. I just wanted it super easy, get the helmet. And then we saw some of the clips, which I thought looked pretty cool. And anyone can do that. I have to say, the GoPro Hero 10 is definitely a step up from the 9. For me, having the 4K 120 for my requirements was a big one. Low light improvement, not massive step up from the 9, but definitely a step up nonetheless. So the GoPro Hero 10 for me was a big choice. If you've got a 9 and you're really happy with it, I wouldn't step up. I'd leave it, save your money, put it in the bank. 
if you've got a hero six, seven, or eight, and you're really feeling that you want to jump up on the tech and the image and the stabilization, because stabilization, of course, with the 10 is phenomenal. It's also phenomenal with the nine, but the smoothness of the operation now because of the new chip. Now, admittedly, you did see a couple of crashes as I turned it on. I swipe up to get the footage and I was just pressing play a little bit too quick if I was getting a bit too antsy and it just crashed but it's, I've not had any problems since. It did crash twice on the first day I ever rode it but bar that it was actually been running perfectly sweet. So if you want, if you've got the 9 and you're happy I wouldn't bother step up if, unless you really want to grab you know the 4K 120 and the, the new improvements and the faster chip if you get annoyed of it glitching. And if you've got the six, seven or eight and you, you really feel like you want that image stabilization improvement or, or quality improvement, I would definitely say step up. I'll just be a nerd like me and just have them all. So I think it's fair to say, as we wrap this up, this is the ultimate MTB POV setup. The Natek Ultimate Chin Mount, the GoPro Hero 10, it doesn't get any better. You're gonna have the best footage. It's gonna look super awesome, super neat, super stealth. Be sure to check out our Instagram because we put all sorts of little testing clips and behind the scenes crashes and everything else. So there'll be a link in the description below. Also, tag us in some of your stuff. We love to see what you guys are up to. So get out there, get shredding, film it, upload it, get sending. All the best, take care, thanks for watching.